Tonight on Newsbeat, the Louisiana State Legislature began a special legislative session. We'll show you what happened on the first day. And President Trump's national security advisor resigned yesterday over potentially illegal contact with Russia. Also, today is Valentine's Day. Stay with us for a sweet edition of Newsbeat that starts right now. Welcome to Newsbeat. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Nadine Busada. And I'm Matt Houston. Thank you for joining us. Governor Edwards called a special legislative session that commenced yesterday. Tiger TV reporter Larissa Bonacquisti has more on the first day of that session. Come to order. Vote your machines, members. Please vote your machines. February 13th marks day one of the 2017 Louisiana special session. Today, Louisiana special session convened where Governor John Bell Edwards spoke to the legislators once again re-emphasizing his desire to use the rainy day funds. Following the swearing-in of two new members of the House, Governor Edwards addressed the room focusing on his hopes for this 10-day session. But please don't resort to budget gimmicks. Propose your cuts honestly and transparently. Subject them to debate. Let's hear what our constituents and stakeholders have to say about their proposals. After all, that is why we're here and that's why we serve. The biggest concern for many is that partisan leanings will get in the way of progress. But we've got to keep an open mind and quit showing up in this place, placing an allegiance to a party over our oath of office. I will not do that. Some of the representatives see how difficult it has become for Louisianans to get the facts about what is actually going on across the state. I just think we get so much um, rhetoric and that the rhetoric that we're giving our people really impairs their ability to have a voice. Regardless of partisanship, it seems as though Louisiana fits into all of the required categories needed to activate the use of the funds. If everything remains the same, as I understand the fiscal facts to be right now, I will support the use of the rainy day fund. This is only day one, and with nine days to go, the legislators have a big job ahead of them. For LSU Manship School, this is Larissa Bonacquisti. The special session is expected to end no later than February 22nd. President Trump's national security advisor, Michael Flynn, resigned yesterday. Flynn misled senior administration officials about his contacts with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. This follows a report that the Justice Department warned the White House last month of Flynn's misstatements regarding his communications with Russian diplomats. The DOJ said this might make him vulnerable to blackmail from Moscow. In his resignation letter, Flynn said he briefed Mike Pence with incomplete information regarding phone calls with the Russian ambassador. Press Secretary Sean Spicer said President Trump's asked for Flynn's resignation over trust issues. and had eroded to the point where he felt he had to make a change. The president was very concerned that General Flynn had misled the vice president and others. Today, an estimated $2 billion is going to be spent on popular Valentine's Day gifts. Not chocolate, not jewelry, but flowers. Reporter Blaise LaCour visits a local florist to see how they handle the Valentine's Day rush. If you didn't know any better, you might think you were inside a beehive. Billy Harriman's flowers buzzes with activity on one of their busiest days of the year, Valentine's Day. You're talking about a 2,500% um, increase, so it involves a lot of planning, a lot of ramp up. Uh, but it's a special day and flowers are a special part of sharing that emotion of love, and so it's, it's fun for us to be a part of that. Because of the large influx of orders, Harriman's hire seasonal employees to help spread the love to their customers. But Ben Harriman is far from a Valentine's Day rookie. So I grew up in and around Ben Stern Business School in seventh grade to work for Valentine's Day. So I've been here now 13 full years doing it full time. And Preparation for Valentine's Day starts as early as December with the ordering of flowers. And on the big day, over 2,500 arrangements are loaded into trucks to be distributed across Baton Rouge. But at the end of it all, the thought of the gift is the most important thing. Flowers um, are what people use to share emotions, and research shows us that people remember the last time they received flowers more than any other gift. So it's a neat business to be a part of. We're sharing happy times, we're sharing loves, and, and we're sharing uh, people's emotions to those that are most important to them in their lives. For Tiger TV, this is Blaze LaCour.
So if you're running late on a Valentine's Day gift and the convenience stores are all out of chocolates, local florists may still have you covered. Love is in the air and LSU students are reminiscing. Tiger TV reporter Josh Riddleberger asked students on campus what their first kiss to was like. Uh, my first kiss was eighth grade. Uh, I was at a little party and, you know, one thing led to another and kissed uh, this girl, Amelie. My first kiss was at the beach when I was... Oh my gosh, when I was 15. <laughs> it, was, it was not romantic. And my first kiss was, I was seven. Seven years old in the second grade behind my school playground. And it was very, very memorable. My first kiss was, uh, I was in eighth grade. It was in Kung Fu Panda 2. And uh, <laughs> um, it was pretty awkward. It was an awkward time. That's, I don't want to go really more into detail than that, but there, there you go. <laughs> First kiss, I don't really remember, but I'm, I know we planned it out, and we were like, we're going to meet after school and, you know, do this. <laughs> so then that's what we did. That was really interesting. So Matt, tell me about your first steamy first kiss. You know, my parents watched this show. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid doing that. When we come back, we'll take a look at how transit on campus could be changing in the near future. Stay with us. One dollar and seventy five cents. That's how much it costs disabled students to ride cats on demand paratransit. Meanwhile, LSU students who don't require the extra care can ride the other buses for free. Kara St. Cyr investigates. LSU's bus service, Tiger Trails, has been transferring the Capital Area Transit System, also known as CATS, for more than eight years. This allows students to get free access on campus and all around the greater Baton Rouge area. All students have to do is flash their IDs to get a lift. But these advantages only benefit some of LSU's population. Those with disabilities may require other types of services. Although both CATS and Tiger Trails offer handicap ramps, basic accessibility isn't always enough. Instead, some may require the services of cats on demand. This bus comes to the homes of students who register for the program. But unlike the other cats buses, users have to pay $1.75 every time they get on the bus. This can total to almost $4 per trip, not including any tax. I mean, my immediate reaction, obviously, is that I'm incredibly angry. Being epileptic, somebody recommended that I seek out services through Cats On Demand. Transportation you know, board member Donna Lewis Collins says the prices are the result of a funding and participation issue. We're mandated by the federal government to provide that service, but it's not funded by it's not funded by the federal government. And so, Cats it probably costs Cats maybe twenty five to thirty dollars to actually provide that service to a resident. But according to Collins, LSU didn't include Cats on Demand when they bid for the Tiger Trails transfer years earlier. But LSU's Senior Director of Transportation and Parking, Jeff Campbell, told a different story. Campbell says this was out of the school's hands. We don't have a lot of say so in it. It's their program. They control it. But in the meantime, members of the disabled population, like Amanda Swenson, are still outraged by the prices. She believes it speaks to a bigger problem at LSU. At LSU really needs to change um, their views of disabled people. And this is, again, just like the United States, but especially LSU. But Swenson hopes to see a change in the future. Reporting from LSU, I'm Kara St. Cyr. Transportation board member Donna Lewis Collins said she wants to see this changed in the future, but the lack of funding going to Capital Area Transit is forcing CATS administration to prioritize their other concerns. When we think Valentine's Day, candy, flowers, and fancy dinners come to mind. But do you know the origins of the holiday? We'll have more on Valentine's Day history right after the break. This year, Americans are expected to spend $18.2 billion for Valentine's Day. However, few people know the brutal story of Valentine's origin. According to the legend, St. Valentine was stoned and beheaded for marrying Christian couples in 269 B.C. The marital angle of the story allowed the Valentine to become the patron saint of love, marriage, and young people. The February 14th celebration was established by Pope Gelatius in 496 C.E. So if you think you're having a bad day, well, it's definitely better than St. Valentine. That is all the time we have for today, but you can keep up with us on social media, and we're always online at lsunow.com.
Thanks for watching, Tigers, and have a fun, safe Valentine's Day. I'm Nadine Abusada. And I'm Matt Houston. Thanks for watching.